For everything, there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. Hello and welcome to Scripture of the Day. My name is Bobby Blakey and I want to invite you to read the Bible and we're going through the end of the book of Acts. And we had planned this epic boat trip to Catalina Island. Just amazing drone footage, underwater filming. And here we are sitting at the dock. We haven't even left yet. We have been delayed and the timing of our trip has been put off by this rainy season we're going through here in Southern California. It's like we're actually experiencing winter. Like what's going on with all of this rain? Somebody came up to me at church the other day and they said, hey, do we get a refund this month in our rent because we're paying for California prices and we're getting this kind of this rain? And so the fact that our trip has been delayed to Catalina by all this rain, we wanted to go weeks ago, we wanted to leave today, and it hasn't been God's timing. And that's exactly what we want to talk about from Acts 25 in today's scripture of the day. God has perfect timing in the way that he works. And sometimes that timing doesn't fit with our schedule or calendar. There was a note at the end of Acts 24 that some of the worship team were talking about in between services this weekend when we were praising God together. I heard some of the worship team talking about the last verse of Acts 24, verse 27. When two years had elapsed, Felix was succeeded by Porcius Festus. So Felix was the governor where Paul was on trial, and now Festus is the governor, and there's just this little note, yeah, two years went by. And so I wonder what Paul's thinking when he knows that just as he testified to the facts about Jesus in Jerusalem, he was told that he would do the same thing in Rome, and yet here he is sitting in Caesarea for two years. So if we go back all the way to Acts 20, that's really when Paul told the Ephesian elders, hey, I'm constrained by the Spirit to go to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there. But the Holy Spirit did testify through other people that imprisonment and afflictions await me. So the Spirit led Paul to go to Jerusalem, even though other people inspired by the Spirit were telling him about, hey, don't go there because they're going to arrest you. There's going to be trials for you. But Paul knew God wanted him to go there, and he did. And then God said to him, just as you did in Jerusalem, you're going to do in Rome. So I wonder what Paul's thinking when he's sitting there watching it go from Felix to Festus. For two years, he's waiting in Caesarea. And I think there's something that we can learn even just from the fact that it took two years. And then finally, when Porcius Festus comes in and he's the governor, he gets the whole conversation going with the Jews again as we read in our chapter today. And then the Jews, you can tell, they want the trial to be in Jerusalem. They want to kill Paul along the way. There's still so much hatred and violence between the Jews against Paul just because he wants to spread the gospel to the Gentiles. And so they have this trial and he says, hey, I, got, I appeal to Caesar. And then comes the statement, Acts 25, verse 12. Then Festus, when he had conferred with his counsel, answered, to Caesar you have appealed, to Caesar you shall go. And so now we're going to begin this trip, hopefully a boat trip to Catalina and a trip in the book of Acts as Paul goes to Rome. And so we see that this is happening not on Paul's timing, but on God's timing. And so much of our life 
is lived in between the big moments that, that we're waiting to happen. The next thing that you're looking forward to, that relationship to develop, that job transfer, that new place you're hoping to live, that baby to be born. It's like people are always waiting for this next exciting thing to come into their life. And it's these in-between moments that we need to trust in the timing of the Lord. So I don't know what it is you're looking forward to. I know some things that I'm looking forward to in my heart, things that have to do with our church even. Is God going to provide for us a bigger building? Is God going to raise up people to plant a church? What's going to happen in the future here at Compass HB? Well, I don't know, but I got to trust God's timing. And here's something I've learned about God from the scripture, from life, is that God makes everything beautiful in its time, that God really does have a plan. And he exists in eternity outside of space and time. And he unfolds things on his schedule, not on mine. And I love that line that David says in Psalm 31, 15. David says, my times are in your hand. And to me, that's so important that when we want something to happen in life, we don't hang on to it or with closed fists saying, hey, I got to have this. This has got to be God's will. This has got to happen. We need to go like this. Hey, God, my times, all that my plans, my dreams, my hopes for life, I got to hold them open because my times are in your hand, Father. It's not about me making my life happen. It's about me trusting God's perfect will for my life, submitting to his will for my life and saying, hey, in the Lord's timing, Lord willing, he'll have me do the next step that he wants me to take. And so just think about Paul sitting there in Caesarea, which was kind of a beautiful place like this is, where we're getting ready here in, in Lido Island, Newport Beach. We're getting ready to set sail. Hopefully we'll be coming to you from Catalina Island soon, but who knows? Who knows when that might happen? We have to trust the Lord's timing. And I hope that's a real encouragement for you as you're watching this scripture of the day, that whatever's playing out in your life, open up your hands. Say, my times are in your hand, Father, and trust the Lord's timing because he makes everything beautiful in its time. And we'll see you for more on Scripture of the Day. He has made everything beautiful in its time.